Epiphany of the Lord Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod behold Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying Where is the newborn king of the Jews We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage When King Herod heard this he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea for thus it has been written through the peop- through the prophets and you Bethlehem land of Judah are are by no means least among the rulers of Judah since you since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel then Herod called the magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance he sent them to Bethlehem and said go and search diligently for the child when you have found him bring me word that i too may go and do him homage after their audience with the king they set out and behold the star that had they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was and they were overjoyed at the seeing the star and on entering the house they saw the child with mary his mother they prostrated themselves and did him homage then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh and having been warned in a dream commentary by father fernando amelini words of joy and hope a good sunday and good feast to all feast of the epiphany This name comes from the Greek word epiphano meaning making oneself be known to the other epiphania means manifestation appearance the manifestation of the divine presence the greeks employed this term to talk about the wonderful manifestations of the gods appearing with demonstrations miracles gestures where their power was revealed when intervening to help in time of need for example to aid in battle it was said that it was an epiphany of the divine the power a help from the gods with the feast of the epiphany eastern christians did not celebrate as much the birth of jesus but the baptism of jesus in the jordan because that would have been the first manifestation of christ to the world this was his epiphany and this feast was celebrated on january the 6th we wonder what manifestation of jesus is it for the pagans so that there was a manifestation of the gods something extraordinary had to happen here we have no extraordinary manifestation we only have a child wrapped in swaddling clothes is this the manifestation of god the answer is yes an epiphany that was not expected but this is the revelation that at birth a single epiphany took place the epiphany of god's unconditional love the story wants to present two sides of this event this epiphany of god a group of people represented by the magi who before this epiphany have changed the direction of their lives they have welcomed the light and there is another group of people the powerful of this world 
political leaders and religious leaders who wanted to perpetuate the ancient kingdom, the ancient religion, and they are not open to the epiphany of God who has come in that child in Bethlehem. Let us enter into the subject. First of all, I want to remind about the popularity of the Magi. Christians always loved the Magi. They were not content with the terse news found in the gospel texts because they lack many details. People wanted to know where they came from, how many they, they were, what were, the, what were their names, what means of transportation they used, then what they, what, it, what they did when they returned to their countries, where are they buried, these emerged countless stories. It is admirable how much appreciation they have had with the Christians. There is a reason uh, they have been so beloved. More, more on that later. The first thing attributed to them is that they were kings. It is not, casual, it is not a casual detail. Christians understood the meaning of this episode narrated by the evangelist Matthew and they felt resound the re announcement of the prophecies of Isaiah in chapter 49 and, verse, and Psalm 72, which speaks to the kings of Sheba and Seba, bringing gifts. So when they re read this passage from the Gospel of Matthew, they felt the echo of the fulfillment of these prophecies and they made them kings. It was the Magi who fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament. The second, the number. There were three. Sure, there were three gifts. So the Magi were also three. In the name Melchior, Balthasar and Gaspar. At my back you see a famous mosaic of the Holy Saviour of Kora, Istanbul. The three Magi arriving to Herod. And here you see that they are coming but not on camels. Because in Turkey there are no camels but horses. See also the star that guided them. Guided by this star and seek information from King Herod. Here we have the three Magi and we can find, we can identify them. Melchior is the oldest. The farthest one, white hair, a long beard, he will offer gold to the Lord. And in the center is Balthasar, mature man, dark skin, also bearded, he will offer mirror. And Gaspar, the younger, beardless, pink hair, who gives the incense. We understand now why they are so likable. The Magi represent the three ages and also the three races of the sons of Noah. But especially that one is old, another a mature person and the other a young lad, they represent all those looking for a light to guide the direction for, of their lives. There is a star that we must follow because we all need to follow a star in life. Let us now look at the gospel text. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod. Some soothsayers, the more accurate term, came from the east, from the east to Jerusalem. And they asked where the king of the Jews was born. Tradition says that they came from Persia, Arabia. The Christians, the, the question marks they had. We saw a star appear and we come to worship him. This star made some people spend too much energy 
and also lose a lot of time searching for it in the sky. A star appearing in the year 7 BC. Therefore, the date of Jesus' birth. People talked about Comet Halley that returns every 77 years. But based on the astronautical calculations, it is said that this comet appeared the year 12 or 11 BC. A little too early because Jesus was born in the year 7 BC. Some spoke of a supernova, an intersection of planets. Astronomers spend a lot of energy or a lot of gray matter looking through old documents to see if some star had appeared. Father Joseph M. Lagrange, a great biblical scholar who lived in Jerusalem and the one who founded the, the Ecole Biblique, uh, saw Halley's Comet appearing in 1911 just over Jerusalem. But as the great Bible scholar that he was, he understood that the star of the Magi is not to be found in the sky but in scriptures because the book of Numbers mentioned mentions a star that was to appear in Israel. It is the famous episode of Balak and Balaam. Balak calls a magician Balaam to do a curse against Israel. And instead of cursing Israel, Balaam makes an announcement of the appearance of a star. We find in book of Numbers chapter 24. For this people of, for this people, for Jacob, for Israel, the prophecy of this magician, the oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eyes is true, typical of soothsayers who always seek an atmosphere of mystery so that their words be better heard. Continuing the prophecy of the book of Numbers, the oracle of the one who sees what the Almighty sees in rapture and with eyes unveiled. And he continues, I see him, but not now. I observe him, but not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and a scepter shall rise from Israel. Israel will act boldly, and Jacob will rule his foes. And this star in the book of Numbers is clearly a king of Israel that will rule the entire world with the new kingdom. Probably the author of this text from the book of Numbers thought of a king of his time, Josiah. But after several years, they realized that the star of Josea and the Davidic dynasty, they had accomplished nothing of this prophecy. And the Jewish people continued to wait. For this star, they continued to wait for this star to appear. And in 35 AD, at the time of the, the second Jewish revolt, the famous rabbi Akai in Caesarea makes a prophecy saying, yeah, the star that Balaam spoke about in the book of Numbers has appeared. Jacob's star has appeared in a character like the King Messiah, but it was total disappointment. Let us go to the star seen by the Magi. The first group of people who see this star want to accept this new kingdom brought by the star that clearly is Jesus, not a star in the sky. This is the star spoken about in the book of Numbers. And the Magi want to bow before this new kingdom. The new kingdom which will replace the old kingdoms, kingdoms of the bees, of the oppressing rulers, 
the Magi are enchanted by this new bright star that is Jesus. Notice that this first group represents those who remain delighted with this light of heaven which is Jesus. The New Testament speaks often of this light. We remember when Zachariah spe speaks of the dawn from on high or Simeon speaks of my eyes that saw the salvation prepared for all peoples, the light that enlightens people. At birth, an angel of the Lord appeared before the sh ship shepherds and the glory of the Lord surrounded them. The Gospel speaks of light. Jesus is the light of the world, the true light. This is the epiphany of heaven. This light is the epiphany of God. The true light is one, is none other than the revelation that Jesus brought to the world, that God is love and loves people madly. We must accept this full revelation of the light that Jesus came to bring. Let us look at these Magi. What characterizes them? This is the first group. Then the second group will follow. The ones who do not want to follow this star. The characteristics of these Magi, first of all, they look up, to, look up into heaven. They are those who contemplate the created, the first brightness of, brightness of the light of God, the Creator. The glory of God is the work of His hands, announces the firmament. If we truly want to become like these Magi, we must not fall back on the earth about the reality of this world as if it were the absolute. We need to look up. This is typical of the person who questions the meaning of this existence of his destiny. The second characteristic, they are people who do not the people who do not neglect to in, internal concerns, waving the hearts of all but hear the inner concerns. They do not resign themselves to the banal meaningless life. They want to give meaning to their existence. They resemble the Magi and find and will be friendly to all those who listen to their inner concerns and allow themselves to be questioned about the meaning of life. They do not fall back on banalities. They are not satisfied with the material, the biological. They want to go further. The third characteristic, they do not stay still. They are moving the kingdom, of, the kingdom to which they belong. The religion they practice do not satisfy them and seek a new kingdom, a new relationship with God. They find an ima image of God that is not adorable, that is not friendly. They seek a new light. These are the Magi and also and all those who have seen the star. Still they have not understood well what kind of star it is, do not know him. But they want to know him. They want to find him. They know that this is the king that was born. The first group represents all of us. In this search, they confront a group that has completely opposing interests. King Herod is troubled. The verb used here is, the, is very strong. Parasain, the star of the sea. How can it be that Herod, the ruler of this world, be troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Herod represents those who have settled in position of political power. And soon we will see that all those belonging to this group are those linked to the religious system. And they do not want to change an image of God which is the old traditional that comes from our reasoning and they accept it. They do not let themselves be charged by, uh, changed by a new light 
and conversely they are bothered by this new light. They are those who accept the usual criteria accepted by all and are those who have stayed with an image of God that protect their outlook on life, their designs for power. They do not move, are installed, do not want any novelty. For them, the kingdom is fine as it is. They do not want change, neither pursue any concerns. These people are drugged, drunk with power, possessions and, and to appearance. This is the second group. Herod called many of his relatives for, Herod killed many of his relatives for the fear that they would overtake his kingdom. And therefore it is normal to worry, be scared by the arrival of the kingdom, arrival of a kingdom that is very different from, from his. It is exactly the opposite of his kingdom. Jerusalem is also agitated. Here, is a, here in the gospel, Jerusalem represents the place of political and religious institution where the light of the star that, Je that is Jesus cannot shine. It is rejected. And you will notice that when the Magi are in Jerusalem, they do not see the star. They see it when they leave the city. The city that represents the old power the old religion, for one that remains in there, the star disappears. The light of Jesus, who is newness, is the new spirit that has entered the world, the epiphany of the true God. Here it calls all the Bible scholars, you see them at my back, the high priest, reading the scripture because they must respond to King Herod where this light should appear. They do not know. They have the word of God in hand. It is the right time for all these people to welcome the light. No matter what life they have, they have had in the darkness, when this light shines, regardless of any condition that, is, that the person is, they should open their mind and heart. It is the time of their life. It is the time of their life for them. Herod might have forgotten his past of intrigues, cruelty, murder. In the year 7, when Jesus was born, Herod strangled two of his sons, Alexander and Aristobulus, in Sebaste Samaria. He could have put an end to a shattered life, but he loses the chance. He will die three years later in Jericho in the midst of a terrible pain. And five days before his death, he kills another son, Antipetrus, who was a worthy son of his father. He also is an intriguing, intriguing person, a flatterer, slanderer of his own brothers. These people representing the ancient kingdom have lost the chance of their lives to open their minds to the new light, this epiphany of God's light. The Magi received the indication and they leave for Bethlehem. Herod secretly called the Magi, go and make a careful search for the child and when you have found him, let me know because I too want to go to worship him. The one in the, in the sphere, sphere of power lives in, a, lives in the lie because only deception can protect the old kingdom. They are afraid of the light. They move in the dark. They hold power, whether political, civil or religious. They cannot get to the truth, to power as service, there is always something to defend. After these words of these words from the king, the Magi leave. Behind me are some very interesting pictures, where the where are there are three camels going up to Bethlehem. 
Bethlehem is seen in the distance. To my left are these three camels and their riders. They are not the Magi. It is a picture of the early 20th century and is very beautiful because it gives the idea of the arrival of these characters in the city of Bethlehem seen in the distance. And you also see another picture of Bethlehem always at the beginning of the 20th century. You see the fields and you can also see Bethlehem with snow. We are in the context of wind, context winter when we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. And also Bethlehem with the shepherds, also a picture of 100 years old and in distance the city of Bethlehem. I said that the star does not shine over Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the kingdom of the ancient world, the old power. It is important to stop thinking like everyone else, to do away of the values of the society and today's values in the world, if you, today's values in the world, if you want to see the star. The reading says, when they saw the star, they were filled with great joy and the star is the one with Mary, that is Jesus. Behind me you see the icon of birth and the Magi who are prostrated before Mary and child who are found in the cave. And you also see something typical of the Christmas icons. The announcement to the shepherds by the angel and the first bath of Jesus. These are all details that always accompany Christmas icons. A word about the gifts they present. They have received various interpretations that you are already familiar with. But I would like to give a biblical explanation for these three gifts. Israel was considered as the people of kings because scripture presented it that way. A people of priests and a people bride of the Lord. Israel is feminine, the spouse of the Lord. These three gifts represent the characteristics of the people of Israel as we compare them to the pagans. The three gifts represent all those who accept the light of this star. The Lord reigned over Israel. So the kingdom of God was the kingdom of Israel. So gold is offered. And, all, and those who offer gold belong to the kingdom of the Lord. The incense is offered by the priests. Israel was a priestly people and now they are the pagans, the ones who offer incense because all people who welcome this light, the church is a people of priests. Finally, the offering of myrrh. Myrrh was the wife's perfume. We find it often in the Song of Songs. My hand drip mirror. My fingers drip mirror. It is quoted many times. Mirror is the symbol of married love. Israel, the wife of the Lord. But now it is not only Israel who is the wife of the Lord, but Israel who is the whole of humanity. Humanity is the beloved wife of the Lord. That is why the Magi are also like Kabul. Good feast for everyone.